Okay, we will have this session here where the sort of headline is the declaration at the Industrial Technology Conference here 2012 here at Aarhus. My name is Fleming Besenbacher. I'm a professor here at Aarhus University. I was for 10 years the managing director of an interdisciplinary nanoscience center here at iNano. Since January 1st this year, I'm chairman of the Carlsberg Foundation and also chairman of the supervisory board of the Carlsberg Brewery. So we have a distinguished group of people up here on the stage and what will happen is that we will start out with a small round table discussion with a few three minutes initial statements and then we will have some discussions. And the first person to start out is actually the chairman of European Factories for Future Research Association, uh, Massino Matucci from Italy, please. Okay. Thank you. And I want to read a statement uh, considering the relevance uh, of the event that we are celebrating today. Uh, the conference has been a highly successful event uh, demonstrating the strong interest of our stakeholders, the importance of the industrial technologies to Europe, and the positive results uh, of our close relationship with the European Union, in particular with our friends uh, at the European Commission. The experience under FP7 has shown that the PPP model is effective in reaching our common objectives, supporting real innovation for fast industrial takeover, and building a strong European network of large industries, SMEs, RTOs, committed to work together in a collaborative way. In the factories of the future, PPP, that I represent from the private side, we have seen a re-engagement of industry in European projects. Compared to previous experiences, as we also have seen a significant reduction in the time to grant. Greater participation has been registered in those projects having a demo pilot activity with contribution from SMEs, especially when involved along the product process value chain. Since the launch of the Factories of the Future PPP in 2009 by President Barroso, we have witnessed the evolution and now the Factories of the Future experience became more and more positive and our community consistently requested that this should develop into a clear formal arrangement with a long-term outlook, fully transparent commitment from both the private and public authorities towards a contractual partnership. Many here today will share these sentiments considering the positive result of our PPP. Today, we are prepared to sign a declaration confirming our existing and long-held commitment to the PPP model. We make it clear that we recognize need to continue and expand our actions to address the challenges facing the European economy. For our industries to do this, they must thrive in global competition continue to invest and create jobs in Europe. Only the combination of innovative products and processes will provide the sustainable way for this to happen. Through this time, our commitment has been demonstrated not only through financial investments in projects, but also through the expert knowledge provided, resources, facilities, equipment, as well as the manpower to keep the factories of the future PPP alive and productive. The commitment we are making here today must correspond to a more positive action from the public side in terms of industrial policy where the importance in, of manufacturing in Europe should not be underestimated. Growth and jobs are strictly related to the success of the European manufacturing industry. Our industrial sector is still suffering the negative effect of the current economic downturn, but we have continued to invest in research and development to expand our market presence and feed our growth. We have continued to drive towards innovative manufacturing that is sustainable and competitive because we need to maintain our industrial presence in Europe if we want to create jobs opportunity for our people. Public authorities are supporting our ability to undertake important research and development that drive innovation are securing present manufacturing jobs and assisting in the creation of new high-skilled jobs. These jobs, we all agree, are essential to the well-being of not only Europe's economy, but also of its changing society. 
We do not forget that the support provided so far means that by the end of 87, over 120 research projects will have been launched with the involvement of hundreds of companies and organizations across Europe, working for reaching results to be easily transferred into real-world application. The factory of the future PPP is now in an ideal position to implement the European strategy on advanced manufacturing systems identified as one key enabling technology, fundamental part of the EU research and innovation agenda. Therefore, we hope that this successful PPP in Horizon 2020 will be supported by adequate funding and with the strong political backing that it needs as we work to keep manufacturing in Europe competitive and sustainable, developing technologies, processes and systems that will change our industries to become part of a smarter network of manufacturing enterprises ready to enter the third industrial revolution. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And the next person to give a short statement here is the Vice President for Energy Efficient Building Association, Ignacio Calvo. Please. Thank you very much. Okay. I am very pleased to have the opportunity to represent the construction and building sector on behalf of the Energy Efficient Buildings Association originated by the European Construction Technology Platform. European is facing a huge challenge to overcome the economic crisis, maintain a great employment and sustainable growth. The internal competitiveness is also very aggressive, I have seen in the, in the previous presentations, and in particular, this scenario is affecting very hard to the European construction sector, with employment directly around the 12 million people. In parallel, Europe has ambitious targets to, to fight the climate change, environmental protections, energy and other research efficiency. In particular case of energy, to reduce the energy intensive and the dependency in the fo fossil fuel will be a key aspect to increase the competitiveness of the European industry. The European Commission has set specific targets to be achieved by 2020, okay, known as 2020 target. Everything is known, but uh, let me sum up. Is uh, energy consumption by 20%, reduce CO2 emissions by 20%, and provide 20% of the total energy shared with renewable energy. The construction sector is the large contribution to CO2 emissions, with buildings uh, responsible for 40% of the total European energy consumption and, uh, and at the third of the CO2 emissions. To act in building sector is fundamental to reach the efficiency goals in the cost-effective way along the life cycles. Unfortunately, today we know that the Europe will not achieve the energy efficient target by 2020. The last estimation show that additional investment of the 6 billion uh, euros per year will be needed to, mo to mobilize to deeply renovate the existing buildings stock in Europe. This is an enormous challenge for the society, the public sector and the industry. Research and innovation is fundamental to speed up, to reduce the association costs, stimulate the industry compromise, create a new market and promotion creation of the knowledge base and new jobs in Europe. Okay, we need the new materials, technology, products and services that are cost effective, able to generate new business models in order to be able to radically decrease, uh, decrease the energy consumption in buildings, reduce the greenhouse emissions, and even develop districts that could deliver an international uh, interchange low carbon energy. Obviously, this change cannot be done by the industry alone. Therefore, a strong and long-term partnership between the public and private sector, represented by industry with special attention to SMEs and the research, working together not only in the research and innovation topic, but also in a coordinated strategy to overcome no technology barriers and the developing the police more agent to adopt innovation by the market. The PPP tools is seen by the industry as a appropriate instrument to develop a coordinated and current strategy for the these strategic challenges and sector for Europe, where the public and private are already working together and will be partnered in the long-term expectative. 
Mm. Industry is ready to commit in terms of additional investment to bring to the research into marketable products, leverage national and regional resources to make an impact and to change current business as usual. We hope that the ARUS Declaration will be the first milestone towards to create of a new and innovation European industry for the energy efficiency in building environment leading in the world. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. And the third representative of the PPEs is Klaus Sommer, Chairman of the Board of SUSCHEM and also representative of the Consortium Spire. Please. Well, thank you very much. Uh, dear Mr. von Bose, dear colleagues from the European Commission, dear colleagues from the other industries, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I consider it a great privilege to participate in this conference, in the Industrial Technologies Conference, because from what I've seen, it's a, an impressive demonstration of strength, impact, technological and business competence. And that is what we need to improve competitiveness of Europe in this uh, competition that we are engaged in globally. Uh, let me briefly talk about SPIRE, the Sustainable Process Industry Through Resource and Energy Efficiency PPP proposal. Since there has been quite some discussion on that, let me focus on three major points. I think one characteristic is that about a dozen different industries from the area of the process industry have um, built this consortium to promote the public-private partnership. So this is a cross-industry activity. It's a cross-industry proposal where we are foking, focusing on common challenges. And I think that's good synergies that we can leverage in when we actually uh, have SPIRE in uh, action. It's the process industry and um, the misconception could be this is just about production processes. No, it's not. It's the full value chain that is important in these industries, like the chemical industry, like the steel industry, glass, ceramics, other metals. The full value chain is the only way we can take raw materials, might they be traditional raw materials or bio-based raw materials, through processing, two materials, two products. We focus on recycling to uh, boost resource efficiency. Energy efficiency is important. And then uh, horizontal issues like education and dissemination. So this full value chain concept is clearly uh, an important element, including the life cycle view, uh, reusing the raw materials as it is uh, appropriate. So this declaration is about regaining momentum and regaining and improving competitiveness in Europe. And I think we always need to come back to that very notion. That means growth in jobs, in production, in technologies, in patents. And that's what we are recognizing as a challenge. And uh, in that sense, we would like to strengthen a strength of Europe through what we are proposing here in the SPIRE PPP. We're clearly cl committing to working in open innovation, in public funding partnerships, in an aligned way. And I think it's a good opportunity in the framework of uh, Europe 2020 and Horizon 2020 to take up the global competition. So I would like to thank everybody who contributed to getting us to this milestone today. Um, I hope that our commitment will be met by the commitments from the public funding side so that we can join and form a strong PPP. And the message here is we are ready to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A very clear statement. As we all are aware of, this conference is arranged within the Danish presidency here in Europe. And therefore, it's very appropriate to have today a representative for the Danish Minister for Science, Technology and Innovation. And that's the Director General, Hans Müller petersen Please, Hans. Well, thank you, Fleming. Um, first of all, let me express my, my thanks to the organizers uh, of this con conference. And thank you especially for organizing this conference, which is the biggest conference in the area of science, uh, technology and innovation uh, during the Danish presidency. 
I'd also like to congratulate the departments with the declaration, which was just introduced here uh, from the scene. From a Danish perspective, we are pleased with the European focus on nanomaterials and uh, production. In Denmark, we increased investments in this uh, area in the beginning of the last decade. These well-timed investments have allowed the uh, development of a strong research base, base in Denmark that are now able to compete at a European level. More than 40% of applications with Danish coordinators in this field receive actually grants from the FP7 programs for NMP. Um, being a, a general director of research and innovation in Denmark, that is very satisfying. It's very satisfying for me to note that. In Denmark, we agreed that increased cooperation between industry and, and research is one of the ways forward for Europe. Strengthened partnerships between the public and private sector should be a driver for economic growth in Europe. In this respect, I believe that the PPP agreement is well in line with the Horizon 2020 proposal uh, as agreed on by the European ministers, uh, science ministers some weeks ago. Denmark has now held the uh, presidency for the European Union for almost six months and we are actually quite proud of what has been achieved and the processes that we have chaired. Uh, we have reached a political agreement on the structure and the main lines of activities in Horizon 2020 and we believe that our Cypriot and Irish colleagues have a strong foundation for setting the unresolved issues regarding settling the unresolved re issues regarding the specification of activities, allocation of funding and rules for participation. Especially the issues of funding requires some attention. The European Commission has proposed a total budget, as you know, of 80 billion euro for Horizon 2020. But in the current time of fiscal constraint, it's not going to be a walk in the park to reach this target. The future presidencies also face an important task in leading the negotiations regarding the internal Horizon 2020 prioritization processes on the budget side. Moreover, there is much more work to be done in terms of the government's governance of the Horizon 2020 program. I believe it is of key importance that we establish a transparent governing structure that is flexible enough to adapt to the changes that will occur during the seven years Horizon 2020 is in function. As has already been stated, uh, the Horizon 2020 includes three main pillars, excellent science, societal challenges, and industrial leadership. The latter pillar on industrial leadership aims to make Europe a more attractive location to invest in as regards re research and innovation. A large part of this pillar consists of activities support leadership in enabling and, indus enabling and industrial technologies. I would like to, to comfort you with the information that during the negotiations that took place in the Minister's Council for the last three, four months, there was a general agreement on the significance and the importance of industrial leadership. It has generally been acknowledged that Europe needs investments in this area and that Horizon 2020 should support greater involvement of industry. During the negotiations, it, also, it has also been debated how much Horizon 2020 should support the integration of different key enabling technologies. This debate has not reached the conclusion yet and will continue during the coming negotiations. This has been an interesting debate fueled by the high-level expert group on key enabling technologies, which presented their work one year ago and recommended a greater integration on the various uh, technology areas. In Denmark, we also believe that there can be advantages in securing funds for a greater integration of key enabling technologies, and uh, that starting point, we look forward to discussing this issue and settling it during the more detailed negotiations ahead of us all. And with this, I would like to pass the floor to my Irish colleague, who is going to take over, not on the 1st of July, but on the 1st of January. Okay, thank you very much, Hans. And as Hans is indicating, the Danish presidency is running out. The European wheel will still turn. And in beginning of 
2013, Ireland will be responsible for the Danish pre for, for the Irish presidency. Sorry, and it's actually so that the next conference here will actually be held in Ireland on June 18th to 20th. <coughs> so please, Liam Brown. Thank you, Fleming. <coughs> and again, I'd like to thank the organisers of the conference for inviting me here today to speak on behalf of the the Irish um, uh, forthcoming presidency. Ireland welcomes a commitment from industry to join forces with the public sector to significantly contribute to European recovery and to address the challenges facing European society at large. We note that industry, we note that industry acknowledges that the EU 2020 strategy demonstrates this requirement is well understood with its emphasis on mobilising EU policies to support growth and strengthen job creation. We strongly support a statement that this requires funding programmes to be structured in a way which enables companies to participate with faster decision making and by reducing the administrative burden. We very much appreciate the commitment to enter into joint programmes and investments to develop, implement and deploy innovative solutions that will secure the sustainability and competitiveness of European industry along with the highly skilled jobs that it provides and that we need. In recent years, Ireland has appeared in the media as one of the major casualties of the global recession. Having suffered a tumultuous decline in fortune after the implosion of the banking and the building sectors, Ireland strongly supports initiatives that will result in significant and sustainable improvement in economic growth and employment, and hence today's announcement is particularly welcome. What is not so often mentioned about Ireland, however, is the country is poised for recovery once global recovery comes. We're a small, open economy, heavily reliant on exports, of which industrial technologies plays a massive part. Nearly 25% of Irish GDP is based on industrial technologies. And as we know from our friends and colleagues in Manufuture, every job in manufacturing is supporting two jobs in service. So hence, the importance cannot be uh, stated highly enough. Irish government policy has strived to make Ireland a great place to do business. We have a number of leading companies in various sectors, eight out of 10 ICT in global leaders, nine of the top 10 pharmaceuticals, 15 of the top 25 in medical devices. Continue to invest heavily in Ireland over the last number of years, including upping the ante in terms of, of research and development. Creating specialised industrial clusters, particular success, many manufacturing companies have developed significant global service centres alongside their manufacturing arms. A range of indigenous companies, SMEs in particular, have set up, been created to support these corporations, and Ireland is home to a range of high-tech, high-performing SMEs that are committed to and engaged in product development and research and development. And a testament to this is that Ireland, in the last Eurostat uh, statistics, is ranked number one in the EU for SME participations in FP7. Um, and a number of Irish companies have grown to scale to become global players in their own right. And in fact, even in these tough fiscal times, last year was a record year for exports for Irish companies. Ireland attaches huge importance to research and innovation and partnership between government, industry and research. We have an ambition to become a leader in innovation, develop an innovation-driven economy, maintains competitive advantage and increases productivity. We have seen during the economic downturn that those companies that have invested in research, development and innovation have held or increased market share and employment. The competitive adv advantage created through research, development and innovation will be a key driver in our economic recovery. To Horizon 2020, Ireland very much supports the Horizon 2020 proposal with the focus on excellent science, industrial leadership and societal challenges. We believe that it is a strategic, well-balanced package. We look forward to playing our part in advancing the negotiations in Horizon 2020 during our presidency. And again, to go back to today's strategic announcement, we feel that partnership, industry, research and government is necessary to further the enterprise-led research agenda. We need to deliver breakthrough solutions to transform our factories, 
improve energy and resource efficiency, in short, to maintain and improve competitiveness if the EU is to prevail on a global stage. And finally, thanks to Fleming, we, we also look forward to hosting the Euronav Forum in Dublin. So a date for your diary, June 18th to 20th next year, and you can be assured of Ireland's continuing full support for greater investment in industrial research and development in Europe in order to increase job creation for European citizens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Time is running and we do not have much time here for discussion, but as I guess we all are aware of that although the Horizons 2020 has got a great start here, one of the huge cha challenges there will be to really get the budget in place to actually implement this year. So maybe I will just take around the table here again, just saying if you, I mean, and that means that prioritization and focus will be key on the agenda. If you should just mention one topic which seen from your chair will be number one in this prioritization here, what would that then be? Could we start over there? Just one topic. <laughs> number one on your priority list, what's that? The number one is uh, to restore the attitude of the European companies to work together in order to restate uh, that Europe in manufacturing uh, and in manufacturing engineering especially has a leadership uh, to defend uh, and to enhance uh, for the future. Okay, and from your chair? Okay, to, to create a knowledge to, 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 to get a, a, a new job with, the, with, the, with that value. Mm. Okay, Klaus. As I said, to strengthen the strengths of Europe is an important concept, I think. And research has traditionally been a true strength of Europe. The question is how do we convert very good research results into economic success that makes us competitive? And I think the programs that we have planned will give us the chance to bridge that gap through demonstration and pilot activities and take the good results into commercial success. Okay, and hence from one of the research agencies. Well, I was actually going to say the same as... as <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let me uh, put the attention to something else. Uh, uh, I hope that the Horizon 2020 will also be uh, uh, a platform for creating a more, you could say, coherent research base in, in Europe uh, where we can mobilize not only uh, the, the countries and the industry that we are so familiar with in, in the EU15 countries, but also uh, drag in uh, attention from and, and also support development in the EU12 uh, countries. I think that's, that's an import, important issue as well. Okay, and Liam? Absolutely, right. And I think all the panel has hit on a number of the, the key topics, and I think that I, I have to, I can't just say one, it has to be collaborative R&D between the research providers and industry, stimulated by government support. I think that's going to be crucial to success, but with a focus. And I think a number of the panel members have put their finger on it. We're very, very good at research in Europe. We need to push it to commercial exploitation also. So that's great news. I'm already hearing a lot of coherence, at least among these five gentlemen here. So that's good for the next step here. Due to time constraints here, we will actually move on now and we will have uh, the signing of the declaration. I will ask the first three gentlemen to come with me to the stage here and do the signing. And maybe we should also have uh, Tom up here just to make sure that we're doing this here correctly. <laughs> but uh, I guess you sign here. Yes, please. please sign. Yes. Ah, sorry. We, we, we have another one. <laughs> Fine. Here the right document. Sorry for that. Two. Okay. That's all. Okay. <laughs> no, no, please sit over there. We'll okay. stay, keep you on the stage here. And Klaus, well, he should have signed up here, but then uh, he will find out. And uh, let's see, we, you have to stay up here. You have to stay up here, please. And then I will ask, ask Van Bosekamer to go up here. 
No, no, you should come up here again, because now officially you are then actually handing out this document here to the EU Commission here. And maybe hence you should also come up here and being together with Van Bose here for the Danish presidency. So we have to handle... You hand the document to Van Bose and to Hans. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. We'll have this becoming a formal agreement between private Okay, and great, great. And would you like to make a short statement here? I think if you take the handheld yeah, microphone, yeah, yeah. that that will make it here. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. I think it's a, it's a great moment. It's a great moment. We started uh, a couple of years ago, by the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, with this uh, PPP process in the recovery plan. And I think um, we can say, yes, it was a success. And this is nice after a couple of years that we can say, yes, it was a success. And I think it was a success because both parties have delivered. You have delivered um, the leadership with regard to the content of work. You have delivered with regard to the industrial participation in the individual projects. We have 50% industrial participation and 25% SME participation in the projects. But it means also that those people who are not standing on this, on this, uh, here on this podium, the colleagues from research and from the research establishments and academia have delivered because they have done the other 50% of research in the interest of the industry. Um, I think the European Commission has delivered because we have, together with you, shaped these work programs and we have spent 1.6 billion on the PPPs and I think last but not least also the member states have delivered because we have a member state program committee and they have supported year after year um, the fact that we would uh, be allowed to spend this money into these uh, innovation related new activities. Now what is the future? The future is indeed uh, innovation. We would like to bring the programs together to m merge research with innovation and take the research results further into an industrial reality. And here the Commission is absolutely convinced that the PPP instrument is the right tool. Here I think the Commission believes in the PPPs and would like to continue the PPPs. Now what does that mean in the next couple of months? What has to happen? We have to have a debate with, uh, on the political level. We hope that it would start already next week when we have the European Council with the heads of state and government, which ha who have on their agenda gross jobs for Europe, how to overcome the crisis, innovation is an important element there. So I think here um, they would continue the, the debate. Um, it would have to be, of course, carried into the Council of Ministers, and I'm very grateful for the Danish, uh, uh, for, for, for the Danish presidency and the upcoming Irish uh, presidency that they are bringing this subject up that, we, that they are discussing it on the political level because what we really need is we need to have a political ownership of, of, of these PPPs. We must understand that there is from all of us this, the, uh, the conviction that this is the tool for innovation. And of course it's extremely important that you have given your commitment not only for research but also for the ste steps beyond research because that is at the end what will create the jobs. So I think the buy-in of all the member states will be necessary and the buy-in of the European Parliament will be necessary. And I think in this overall debate, we of course will always work in close cooperation with yourselves from industry, but also with the colleagues from the research establishment and from academia. And I think then with all these elements, I think we'll make it a success. We are very happy today that we are where we are. But in a year from now, let's say, we would like to be able to deliver also the, the PPPs for Horizon 2020. So we are not uh, uh, out of work, which is very good. So we have some, still, some a number of things still to do, and we'll do it together. Thank you very much.